So what are building codes? Building codes set standards for design, how buildings are built, materials used, and the overall performance. By doing this, it sets a minimum requirement for the health, safety, and general welfare of all occupants. Tribes as sovereign nations have broad opportunities to redefine the purpose, scope, goals, and design of their systems to guide and manage construction on tribal lands, according to the Environmental Protection Agency. For tribes that have not adopted building codes, they may have reduced control of building standards and practices usually resorting to state codes, which are referred to as the worst you can build a building by law. Some of the benefits of building codes include construction practices are standardized, easier training, lowers construction costs and future repairs, levels the playing field for contractors and ensures that they meet minimum standards of construction and also improved accessibility. Building codes can improve the quality of construction and prevent building delays and extra costs that come with delays. One of the examples would be the community center. It was supposed to open in 2019, but opened three years later due to many delays and many of the costs that came with it. Building codes work to address certain issues based on local needs and values. Some of the issues addressed include structural failure, which can present as uneven floors, wall and ceiling cracks, doors not closing, roof leaks, and many more, fire hazards. So without building codes, it could spread easily. And with building codes, it may be localized because of fire prevention measures like a firewall or sprinkler systems. Building codes consider things like storms, for example, the tribal building with the north facing roof, snowfall goes off to the north and it doesn't melt because it's north facing and causes a lot of ice, which is a health hazard, which happens without building codes. And with building codes, there may be environmental factors considered like an east facing roof and so that the snow will melt. Things like wind damage are considered, so without building codes, as you may know, there were roofs that blew off this last winter, and with building codes, um, buildings would be built with durable materials that will are made to withstand certain weather factors like wind. Flooding without building codes, there may be flooding with building codes. Houses are raised Building codes consider electrical hazards, so without building codes, there may be exposed live wires, poor wire management, outlets in precarious places, and an overall high risk of electrocution. With building codes, there is good wire management and overall low risk of electrocution. For dangerous fumes and gases, in homes without building codes, there may be a large buildup of smoke, carbon monoxide, and other dangerous fumes and it's overall a high risk of poor health outcomes. And then with building codes, there will be preventive measures like carbon monoxide and smoke detectors, proper ventilation, no smoke escaping from indoor wood burning stoves. Building codes can also account for sustainability. So without building codes, there may be high emissions, poor insulation, wasteful appliances, leaky faucets, and overall uh, wasteful with building codes. There may be high efficiency appliances, solar panels, well insulated and durable materials made to last. One resource that is helpful in if a tribe wants to make building codes is the EPA's Tribal Green Building Toolkit. It is a comprehensive 167 page guide with steps on how to make your own building codes or adopt other model building codes. Some of the benefits of building codes include reducing natural resource and climate impacts, making housing more affordable, minimizing non-renewable energy consumption, enhancing indoor and outdoor air quality, protect and conserve water resources, improve operation and maintenance practices, improve connectivity of communities, 
protect and create opportunities for production of food and goods and promote human and health and human health and cultural revitalization what are the steps to adopting building codes the first step is to use the assessment tool which is made up of checklists and document um, divided into six categories including land use materials and resource conservation human health radon mold and other hazardous pollutants energy efficiency and renewable energy water access management and sanitization and resiliency and adaptability and then they are also divided into subcategories step one for completing the assessment is to read through the sustainable design question objective and rationale step two is to review the specific questions step three use the list of tools and techniques to help evaluate the tribe's codes or ordinances step four answer the assessment questions by checking green yellow or red step five add additional questions tools or techniques that the community would like to consider for the appropriate section step six total the number of green yellow and red answers step seven use the green yellow and red indicator results to work on the priorities with the community input here is an example of what one of the columns looks like column one column two and column three the goal is to get mostly in the green so completing the toolkit assessment is part of step one along with conducting initial research which includes identifying any potential partners to coordinate with what tribal entities and outside agencies will be involved can community members be a part of the code development and there are more parts of the step in the toolkit step two is to review and refine priorities along with community visioning this includes um, community um, setting up a committee for planning goal setting meetings design workshops and plan review and plan presentation to uh, the tribal government step three is to assess internal and external barriers and opportunities for change which answers the questions what is the tribe's capacity to implement building codes what are the obstacles or opportunities that exist to achieve building code development implementation and compliance step four is to choose approach and type of building code step five finalize code for tribal government approval adoption and implementation step six create an implementation plan and compliance system step seven evaluate and update the code as needed so some things to consider in the plan and budget are staffing needs training needs time frames defined organizational and operational structure, inter and intra-departmental relationships and responsibilities, estimated costs, funding sources, and fee schedule. Some examples of tribal code inspection and compliance techniques include training staff to conduct building inspections, hiring an experienced building inspector, working with a local jurisdiction to provide inspection support, hiring a third-party code inspector, and using informal processes or mediation. And to outline some other benefits of building codes, um, for public health and safety, some of the outcomes are reduced asthma, cancer, and other illnesses, prevent radon in buildings, promote physical activity through increased ceremonial and recreational spaces, cleaner burning heating, such as EPA-certified stoves and electric heaters, and for environmental quality to protect the local habitat, conserve resources, reduce the negative impact of building and construction on the natural environment and climate. Some benefits to the economy, affordability, and financial sustainability include increase income within the community by using local labor and resources, reduce or eliminate utility bills or high cost of fuels, reduce long-term maintenance needs and expenses, meet funding and insurance requirements, and reduce renovation and reduce illness and associated healthcare costs. Um, for tribal sovereignty and self-sufficiency, you can define performance measures appropriate to the tribe's needs, climate, and local culture, um, complement the tribe's knowledge of environment and human health, emphasize sustainable and cultural uses of natural and local resources. And for tribal culture and community development, you can 
strengthen community social ties, and connect people to the natural environment, promote building designs that incorporate traditional knowledge and facilitate spiritual and cultural practices, support sustainable design innovation, and celebrate the value of cultural art and design, and protect cultural and sacred lands and structures. And the EPA's Tribal Green Building Toolkit comes with a lot of resources, including green codes that overlay comprehensive life and safety codes, along with many other codes that will come, I mean, many other resources in the following slides. Like resources for updating, adapting, adopting, or developing new codes, green standards, rating, and labeling systems, and point programs, resources for developing new codes, On the Hickory Apache Reservation, the lack of adequate building codes has led to the repeated delay of new constructions, inappropriate design, or consideration of location causing shifting foundations and overall unsafe living conditions, leading to poor health outcomes. The Hickory Apache Administration should prioritize adopting improved building codes that set a high standard for buildings in order to protect the health and well-being of the community.